Russia, Siberia, Irkutsk region. The hermit's antipins from the Irkutsk region have spent 20 years in the Siberian forest, Taiga. In 2002, Anna ran away from her husband with their four children and left the forest. She asked for help from the residents of the village Serebrobo, which is located in the Taisha district of the Irkutsk region. The village administration gave Anna a separate house. The children began to study in school. How do they live 12 years later in the village? Could they take root in society or not? What ended the experiment on the return of forest hermits to ordinary life? The village of Serebrovo is located 100 kilometers from the district center Taishet on the Buryusa River. Hello, come into the house. See how we live. We live in this house for 12 years. We purchased our farm. Come watch our animals. Now it's time to feed the animals. Anna deftly manages the household. In her mini farm life, cow, sheep, chickens and pigeons. Younger daughters, Sveta and Snezana, who Anna gave birth in a second marriage, help the mother. Look, this is a chicken. Give me. Take it. This is not a cock. Hold it tight, otherwise she will run away. Now you hold. Well, you're a coward. Chicken is small. Don't be afraid of her. Now Anna is in a second marriage with Alexander, a local man from the village. He is younger than Anna by 10 years. Now he works in the tiger. Anna independently brings up children and is engaged in a mini farm. It is hard to believe that this fragile woman lived independently in the tiger for 20 years. Her story began in 1982. Young Anna was 16 years old when she left home with her stepfather Victor Antipin. Highly educated idealist Antipin believed that human happiness is in its natural habitat. He invented a utopian country called Factoria, in which there is no harmful influence of civilization and disease. He inspired his ideals to the young stepdaughter Anna, and they together went into the forest. We called our departure from civilization separation. The first four years we lived in Avenkia. We called it the Avenkian separation. Our eldest daughter Olenia was born there. Before her, we also had two sons, but they died. Olenia is the first child who survived. She is tenacious, very strong, obstinate. She did not succumb to anything and survived. Yes, we roamed for Avenkia for four years. Then we returned to civilization. We tried to roam in other regions of Russia, in the Vologda region. In the Velikyastayag area, we hoped that in the western part of Russia, a softer and more friendly climate and nature than the cruel and inhospitable nature of Siberia. But Siberians do not need anything except Siberia, and we returned to Siberia. The country hermits found on the Buryusa River. They lived in a small hut with four children, 12 kilometers from Serebrovo. When the children grew up, it became unbearable to live in the forest. In 2002, Anna came out of the forest to the people. The former head of the village, Vasily Abukov, helped Anna adapt to society. Vasily Abukov remembers once two girls, a young and thin, approached the gate. It turned out that it was Anna and her daughter. She and her daughter have a small age difference, 15 to 16 years. They greeted me and said that they would like to move to live in our village. I went to the forest to see with my own eyes the conditions in which the children live. It turned out to be a wooden hut measuring two by two and a half meters. Very little. They were six people, two adults and four children. In the corner was an iron stove. Anna told me that at night, when everyone was asleep, she had nowhere to sleep. 
She sat by the stove, kept the fire on, and everyone else slept. It was terrible. Terrible conditions for children. They had nothing to eat. They were starving. I found a house for them in Cerebrovo, brought them groceries. Six bags of potatoes, several bags of flour and gave them money, helped them. They took root in the village. The children began to study at school. Victor Antipin was left alone in the tiger. He categorically refused to live in the village. Anna remembers, when I left, our children left with me. He missed children a lot. He hung the children's things on the rope, like a talisman, hoping the children would return. The last time he came to us on February 14th before his death. It was the birthday of the eldest daughter. Sometimes he came to us for food. He had his own clothes, but there was no food. On February 14th, he came to our village. On February 15th, he returned to the forest, and on March 27th, Olenya went to visit him and found him dead. The elder sons, Michael and Victor, finished school and left for the city. As Anna says, they flew away from her nest. Victor, after the army, left for Tyshet and got married. Works at the sawmill. Mikhail went to Angarsk and works as a driver there. The youngest daughter, Olesia, is now 16 years old. She is studying in the graduating class of the school. In 2002, you were three years old. Do you remember anything? No, I remember almost nothing. Maybe you just do not want to remember? No, I do not remember. I remember myself from the age of five. The eldest daughter of Victor and Anna, named Olenya in honor of the female deer, which fed the girl with their milk. She still lives in Cerebrovo. She is now 28 years old. She is married. And she has a five-year-old daughter, Tanya. She changed her own name, Olenya, to the more traditional Alona. A young woman is very religious. Alona says, my father died in the forest. I was very worried about him, thought about how he was suffering alone in the forest. Then I read in the Bible that the human body, created from the earth, returns to the earth. Therefore, he does not suffer, he just died. Now I will hope that one day he will be resurrected and I will see him again. When your family came out of the tiger, you were 16 years old. All these 16 years you lived in the tiger. How do you now assess the years lived in the tiger? Alona says, I estimate these years as a happy childhood, as a unique childhood, which no one else had. It would probably be difficult to live there all my life. But for the child it was happiness. Can you remember your usual day at 15 years old in the tiger? Alona said, it was such a happiness that I envy myself. I did the usual household chores, I brought water, prepared firewood, washed, done something else, walked in the tiger. I thoughtfully walked in the woods, sometimes climbed trees, listened to birds sing. I love to hunt. In the fall, I set rope traps in the forest. There was no fuss, I was in no hurry. I didn't have to come home strictly according to time, I didn't have to go to work by a certain time. I did not try to do a lot of things at the same time or go to several places at the same time. As now. Anna's time to work. In the neighboring village of Solyunaya, she works as a school watchman. We are going along with Anna in the school bus, in which the disco of the 80s plays loudly. Around us the dark night and tiger. It seems romantic to us, but for Anna it is a daily life.
Anna says, I work the night shift, two days at home and a day at work. I start working the night shift. All weekends and all holidays I have to be at work around the clock. But the rest of the time I work only at night. Once in an hour or two I make a detour, I look for the situation to be calm. If something suspicious is there, I go out more often. At work, Anna is engaged in a favorite hobby, knits children's socks and mittens. I always knitted a lot and sewed for children. I made them new clothes from my old clothes. We had few clothes, we had to change our old clothes. I sewed pants, sweaters, from my school dress I sewed a shirt for Victor. I myself embroidered the patterns on the chest. Dinner time, Anna remembered what her family ate in the tiger. There were times when we had all the food and caught fish. But there were times when we ate only grass and nettles. I crushed grass with my hands, poured boiling water over it and poured it with sunflower oil. It was salad. It was all our food for the day. But I had a beautiful figure, not the same as now. That's the fate of the hermit's antipins. From the former life remained only memories. The tiger gave me Siberian power, the ability to survive. Now I also need to adapt to live in contact with people. In the tiger, I developed a strong character. If this had not happened in my life, I would not be what I became. I talked about this many times. My family was dysfunctional. I could become a drunkard. Maybe I would have died long ago. Tiger gave me a lot of values. I do not regret life in the tiger. In the same way, I do not regret living in the village. I have adapted and live well. Could you wish your children such a life in the tiger? No, of course, I would would not want this for my children. But, I confess, sometimes I get thoughts of going to the tiger again. Of course, I understand that age will not allow me to go through it again and again to win. Years take their toll. Now I want a better and more comfortable life, with warm water, with a warm toilet. Although ten years ago, our family did not need it. If we were offered such a life, we would laugh for a long time. It's just that a person is aging and his diseases are winning.